Sunbelt gets four teams into the NCAA tournament. It's locked on Sunbelt. You are locked on Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. All right, so it doesn't happen very often, but Schultz was right. Uh, The four teams that I thought were getting in got in. Southern Miss with the automatic berth. Regular season champ, Louisiana Raging Cajuns. Uh, JMU, nice run in the tournament. And Coastal Carolina did enough in the regular season. Won a game in the Sunbelt Conference tournament. And the whole Gary Gilmore uh, send up. Uh, surprisingly, that people thought that Troy had a shot and deserved to be there. We'll get into that. And the same for... Georgia Southern, although I think I saw some Georgia Southern fans say, man, we didn't quite do enough. (laughs) I mean, they had such a good tournament uh, and losing in the championship game to Southern Miss, they moved up 14 spots. So heading into the tournament, they were 68. That's, I mean, you kind of know going into it at that point in time. All right, so let's go over uh, the regionals. And boy, I would tell you, I think that Southern Miss, Got screwed. Am I allowed to say that on Locked on Sunbelt? They came into the conference tournament with the the highest RPI, the um, second in the regular season, and then go out and win the tournament. And with all of that, they get the worst two seed in America playing the number one seed, Tennessee Volunteers. Now, there was a little bit of of fun in that, in that uh, they played in the Super Regionals last year. There was a whole hoo-ha about who should host. And they picked the right host because Southern Miss was better the way it worked out. Uh, Tennessee complained because of the rain and there was no Applebee's and that kind of went viral. It's back today uh, or yesterday talking about no Applebee's in Hattiesburg. uh, And there was plenty of that in Knoxville, apparently. Um, It is not the easiest of all regionals. The Vols are the number one seed overall. Southern Miss, number two. They get Indiana baseball, number three. And then the North Kentucky Norse, which I don't know what that is, but I'm getting a hat. (laughs) I don't know what the North Kentucky Norse is. My... Uh, nephew lives in Louisville and I need a NKU hat. I just, I don't know what a Norse is. Uh, that's outstanding. It's a tough spot for Southern Miss because how, how do the Cajuns, you know, get a better seating? Uh, Coastal Carolina got a better seating and JMU ends up with better seating, even if they're not two or three, even if they're not the second seed. So, Southern Miss gets a chance. Now you can look at it this way. Southern Miss gets a chance at revenge in Knoxville last year. Southern Miss probably should have won that super regional. They were one game up and had their ace on the mound. And then we got a rain delay and that turned the whole thing around. Uh, And the, uh, the golden Eagles never recovered. And we know uh, the rest of the story from there. But Southern Miss heading off to Knoxville to try and knock off the number one seeded uh, Knoxville. I say Smokies. I hope I didn't say that. Knoxville or the Tennessee Volunteers. All right. I just used to do. And they're not even the Knoxville Smokies anymore. They're the Tennessee Smokies uh, these days. All right. So then it turns out that uh, the Cajuns get a. They're in the uh, College Station Regional. But I don't mind telling you, I was a little nervous. I saw a couple of people put it out there. Maybe the Cajuns were on the bubble. They obviously weren't. But uh, they were the last team announced into the tournament because 
the College Station, the Bryan College Station Regional was the last one announced. And uh, fortunately, we had uh, Jay Walker, the voice of the Cajun, standing next to me. Like, are you getting nervous? He's like, no, a m hasn't been announced yet. So the Aggies are the three seed. Grambling, who gets in as the automatic uh, berth out of that conference because of a play at the plate, didn't score one run, but scored two. And so Grambling is in. Texas is in, which I think a lot of people thought was going to happen. And they're taking on the Cajuns. Cajuns lost to Texas last year in a game where I think Texas made, oh, I don't know, about a half a dozen outstanding defensive plays, keeping the uh, vaunted Cajuns offense off the board last year down in Coral Gables. This is a tough spot for the Cajuns. And I wish I knew, and maybe we'll find out more uh, moving forward, but, you know, Chase Morgan didn't pitch a whole lot last week. Uh, Carson Fluno didn't pitch a whole lot last week. I think LP Langevin, the Sunbelt pitcher of the year, is a little tired. Andrew Herman didn't pitch at all last week in uh, the Sunbelt Conference Tournament. So I don't know what the Cajuns have going in. I think it's a tough spot. See if you can beat Texas. You certainly have anybody that you want to go with, right? I mean, if, you know, they were they were starting, you know, um, Morgan and Fluno on two days short rest. So they play five o'clock on Friday. Um, so you could go with really anybody because they played Wednesday and Thursday. So they could play, you could go with anybody because there's not a lot of, uh, there wasn't a lot of stress uh, in that conference tournament. And we'll see how that goes. They did say that a great practice on Saturday. I'm not sure that you usually find that out if it's not a great practice, but they came back and practiced and tried uh, to write the ship. Okay. Uh, also going in is, let's see if we can find it here, uh, Coastal Carolina. They are a number three seed. Uh, they're on with Clemson. They're in the Clemson Regional. And so it's Clemson, High Point, and Coastal gets Vandy. That's not going to be easy for Coastal Carolina. And maybe Coastal Carolina got in because of the Gary Gilmore situation. And it felt like all the teams that were on the bubble that had people on the committee went that way. Uh, although I do think that I thought Coastal was getting in before I knew any of that. I just thought they were uh, going to get in once they beat Georgia State. We'll get to the what if uh, a little bit later. But Coastal Carolina is in. That's a tough Tough spot for Coastal Carolina. Uh, a lot like LSU, you know, they don't, they have they really don't have any pitching, and can they hit in Clemson's ballpark? That's that's the case. Uh, Gary Gilmore was very clear: we either uh, pitch it well and don't get any hitting, or we cream the ball and don't get any pitching. And so, see if they can put it together in either of the first two ball games. Obviously, it's such a huge advantage to win uh, the first two ball games of this uh, regional. All right, and uh, the last team actually was, I think, you know, off the top of my head, I don't know who got in first, but uh, JMU got in, and I thought they were always on. Um, they had to do some work in the conference tournament, and let's be honest, they did. They got to the semifinals. They beat the Cajuns. They were down seven to one. So maybe somebody was paying attention to that. And they had a pretty good RPI. Jay Walker did point out to me. Uh, there are a lot of their RPI comes from playing Arkansas four times and beating them once. Uh, they're in the Raleigh region. They may have a shot at this. All right. Let's be honest. They may have a shot at this. So let me get this straight. <laughs> uh, they are playing South Carolina. So they do have to play an SEC team first. but. Okay, um, it doesn't matter if they're the two or three seed. But they're going to the 10th seed NC State baseball. And I know we got the pod system in college baseball as well. But JMU is going to NC State as a three seed, whereas Southern Miss is going to Knoxville as a two seed. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, but so maybe this is going to answer my last uh, segment here in the... Uh, in the, in today's episode. So it's NC State, the number 10 seeded team against Bryant, JMU, and uh, South Carolina are in uh, the Raleigh Regional. And, 
You know, I think Coastal and JMU caught a couple of breaks. Cajuns ended up where people thought they were going to go. And, well, flat out, Southern Miss got screwed. Southern Miss got screwed. I was even bringing it up with Kevin Foote. You'd much rather be a three seed in what JMU is than a two seed than maybe where the Cajuns are going. It is what it is. All right, let's talk about the teams that did not get in uh, when we come back. It is Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Let me tell you about FanDuel. It's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel is giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Some of the fun in this is betting in-game. You could have made a little bit of money, if not a lot of money, taking LSU when they were behind <laughs> this past week. And I don't know if they had the over-under uh, for that uh, final between Southern Miss and Georgia Southern, but you could have figured out that that was probably going to go over. Uh, so you can always, and then the best thing about these things are is that you can cash out. If you don't want to, you know, try to win it at the end, they'll give you the cash availability to cash out. I think that's outstanding. So you don't lose a late. You may, you're not going to win as much money, but winning is winning. Uh, and that's the way to go. All right. Let's come back. We'll be back right after this. It's Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. And look at that. All right. Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. All right, so the teams that did not get in, Troy and uh, Georgia Southern. And I'm just not sure if they deserve if they deserved uh, to get in because of their uh, record uh, this year. All right. Um, again, Troy had, and we talked about this, just an awful out-of-conference schedule. Um, 219th. That's just brutal, right? Maybe that's why JMU got in, because they had the fifth-ranked conference schedule. Coastal Carolina had, like, the third-ranked out-of-conference schedule. Should be out-of-conference schedule. Uh, we mentioned it in yesterday's episode. Uh, the Cajuns' out-of-conference schedule had improved I think significantly, almost like 20% because LSU got hot, La Tech got hot. Um, Nichols won the Southland Conference Tournament and Georgia Southern ends up going all the way to the championship in the Sun Belt. Troy finished 37 and 22. They had the 219th ranked uh, out of conference schedule. It's just a tough sell. They did go 18 and 12 in the conference. They had three quadrant one wins. I mean, they had a good season, but it's not difficult to poke a hole in why didn't Troy get in? You can just look at their, you know, their RPI is 57. Their non-conference RPI is 81. Strength of schedule overall is 88, which isn't awful, but their non-conference schedule is 219 and that is that's just bad and they have to do a better job of trying to schedule uh, better teams and sometimes you know you do get lucky right I, i'm not i don't think so i was told rice was supposed to be better this year okay um we didn't think la tech was all that good and they've been really good this year all right like they went you know the cajuns beat them and then well they returned the favor don't forget that but the gate and stop that winning streak the Cajuns beat them, and then they went out and lost three in a row to Arizona, who ends up hosting. Uh, so nobody really knew how good La Tech was, especially early in the season, and they have uh, moved up. Georgia Southern was also not in. And again, going back and forth. Um, and the, the reason for we use the RPI and the KPI is that it is impossible to watch all these games. I guess you could keep an eye on them, you know, 
Maybe get somebody, if you're an AD or something along those lines, give me a report who's hot, right? That, you know, who's moving up? Maybe here's the Warren Nolan, you know, thing. Uh, let me see where Georgia Southern finished. Georgia Southern finished uh, 54. Heading into the tournament, uh, they were 68, as I mentioned. Um, now, they had a pretty good out-of-conference schedule. They did. Um, their strength of schedule overall is 35, really good. Non-conference schedule is 18, very solid. And for some reason, they had an RPI of only 54. They did finish 33 and 26. So they finished a grand total of seven games over. And remember, they finished the season three and one. So, I mean, they were 30 and 25. Which seems odd. They must have had a game canceled in there. Yeah, they had a Kennesaw State game canceled. Uh, they did split with Mercer. Uh, they got swept by the Cajuns. That's a killer. Certainly helps the Cajuns, but that's a killer. Losing to App State one game isn't bad. They took two out of three from App State. I mean, overall, they won like six out of their last eight ball games. But losing at home... Uh, Getting swept by the Cajuns isn't great. They did beat ULM, but that's not going to help, right? I mean, they sweep Marshall and ULM, and that's just not going to help, right? There, Marshall's 190, and ULM is 172. Not going to help. They got swept by James Madison. So they got swept by James Madison. The RPI is good for James Madison, but they get swept by the Ma they get swept by the Dukes, and they get swept by um, the Cajuns. That's just not going to help, right? They lost two out of three to Coastal Carolina. You know, they really didn't have, I guess their best series is two out of three over Southern Miss. Is that what I'm looking at? That's what it appears to be. So they put themselves in that, in that mix. It's not, that's the problem with the Sun Belt, right? It's not the SEC like LSU can turn it around against some lesser teams. Although they did play A&M, took two out of three from them. Lost to Alabama on the road. That's not that bad, two out of three, because it's on the road. Um, but otherwise, they took care of business, and they did make a run in the conference tournament all the way to the championship, although so did uh, so did Georgia Southern. But, I mean, is their best series win? What is that? They took two out of three from App State. Is that it? I don't think that's it. Hold on. Well, they took two out of three from Southern Miss. That's their best series win. So it's kind of tough to for me to, or the committee, I guess, to justify uh, Georgia Southern uh, getting in. Had a good season and a good run, and I got to believe going into the tournament, they knew they had to win it. And, you know, they went to the top of the ninth with the two-run lead. They certainly had a shot. All right, let's take a time out. When we come back, we will discuss who's got the best shot to win the regional. We'll do that when we come back right after this. All right, it's Dave Schultz locked on Sun Belt. I tried to make the graphic. I actually did. You got to believe me. I tried to look for a graphic to, you know, drive or subscribe here, drive for 1500. I couldn't find it, but we did get over 1241. You guys are the best. Uh, I got a feeling we're going to get at least one team to a super regional. It didn't happen with the Sun Belt softball. They all won the first day, but then all lost the second day. And I think a couple of teams, the Cajuns, did get to the championship round. Uh, and I think Texas State got to the championship round. No, they all got to the championship round, but nobody could could pull out a victory. Same with South Alabama. Uh, so hopefully we'll see what we do over the next few weeks. Uh, we're just not that far away from, you know, previewing football. Later this week, we're going to do uh, win totals. That came out from FanDuel. We'll see where they are. I think there are a couple that are high. I think there's a couple of easy bets that are going under. So we'll talk about that. Uh, still lots to do. So really appreciate you guys uh, spreading the word. Uh, surprisingly, the conversations back and forth on Twitter have been uh, reasonable uh, without getting personal. Uh, so that's always fun as well. And I am the one answering any comments on uh, YouTube when it says from Lockdown Sunday. So thank you so much. Keep those comments coming. Please subscribe. Uh, and really appreciate it. We're going to try and get 1,500 before the college football season kicks off. I'm not talking week zero. That's no. Week zero to me, week one to me is where we're going at. That's uh, August 31st. All right.
Let's get back to it. Who's got the best shot to win a regional? Let's discuss on Locked on Sundown. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. Uh, again, with the Cajuns, I just don't know. Uh, I don't know who's available. Lineup-wise, you know, they got to get some hitting back. All right. Um, more consistent, all right, and not give away some at-bats, which they did apparently against ODU, and then kind of coasted against JMU when JMU was coming back. But the key for the Cajuns is the pitching. Is Herman available? Is, uh, you know, how much are we going with Morgan and Fluno? Who's coming out of the bullpen after Langevin? Is it a David Christie? Is it a Blake McGee? Is it a Blake Marshall? You know, I don't think Holtzhammer's on the roster uh, right now. You got to pare down the roster. So uh, we'll see what the plans are. It may or may not be a secret. I'm not sure it's that big of a deal. Um, they'll find out soon enough. And we'll see if we find out before they take off. I guess they go on Wednesday and probably have a practice on Thursday, and then they play on Friday. So uh, we are planning, we being me, myself, and I, are at least thinking about going. Got a hotel reservation. We'll see if that comes true. Uh, I've never been to College Station. Uh, that, you know, not the worst of all ideas. I don't know why it took me a minute to think about that, but uh, that's about as close as you can go and play. Uh, and, you know, and then we may be able to make a bourbon stop in in, uh, in Texas where they have some things that we can't get here in Louisiana. So that's a, it's a plus plus. Okay. So I don't know about the Cajuns. I really don't. I'd like to think Southern Miss has a shot. You certainly know they want their shot at Tennessee. You got to beat them two out of three. It's probably what's going to happen. And so we'll see. Uh, who do they get? Who did I say they get first up? Why can't I seem to remember that? Let's see here. Oh, it's Indiana. So they get Indiana and then they get the Norse. <laughs> the Norse is in there. Uh, need a Norse. Um, need a Norse cap. Uh, so we'll see. Obviously, the revenge is there. It's just not going to be easy because. They're the number one seed. Having said that, I don't know what the record is of the number one seed getting to Omaha on an annual basis. I did hear those guys at the SEC, Tom Hart and Kyle Peterson and company, tell me uh, it's been since 1999 since the number one seed won the conference. Won, not the conference, won the NCAA. So Tennessee may be the best team, but right now you could look at it. History is not either on their side or they're due. Not only is Tennessee due, but the number one seed is due. Miami was the last overall number one seed to win the national championship, and that was 1999. So that's crazy. Uh, that's way crazy. As they pointed out, UConn was the overall number one seed, and not sure they lost too many games by single digits this year in the NCAA tournament. That's how much better they were. That's different. That's not baseball. That is basketball. Okay, so I think it's going to be tough for – a Southern Miss to overcome that. And I'm the first to tell you, I'm not the first to tell you, the Southern Miss got screwed. All right. They, they got screwed. Who did not get screwed was uh, JMU. They get uh, the three seed in the Raleigh region. And out of all the teams in the Sun Belt, they, I think they have the best shot. They got to beat South Carolina. Um, they got NC State. Bryant is in that region as well. But they have as good a shot as any to get out of that region. Let's see what talking college baseball does. Someone put some, I thought they put some uh, percentages on who could win. Maybe somebody else did. I thought it was them. No, not the case. I'll have to find, I saw that earlier today, and that's probably odds. Oddly enough, I know there's a different podcast, but uh, LSU only had a 20% chance against Chapel Hill, against Carolina. Really? Hmm. All right. I uh, was interested in that one. Uh, and then uh, the other one is uh, Coastal Carolina. Uh, that's in uh, the Clemson region. 
And I think that's just going to be tough. Uh, they don't have a lot of pitching. Uh, they're going to go up against Vanderbilt. They're in a tough spot. So if you lose to Vanderbilt, you get high point. And then you get the loser of Clemson and Vanderbilt. So you're going to have to beat Vanderbilt or Clemson. And then you're going to have to beat the other two teams. Then you have to beat the other team twice. So uh, see if Coastal can get a win. And we'll go from there. Uh, I'll be the first to tell you, I don't know much about Texas for the Cajuns. I'm, in this case, I'm usually not like this. I'm more concerned with the Cajuns than the other team. If you tell me what the Cajuns pitching is, and maybe we'll find that out during this uh, during the week, I'd be much more apt on making a prediction. If we're going, I would presume we're going to, it's Morgan Fluno to begin with. And then maybe you have Herman in game three. All right. That would be, that would seem to be the case right now. I'm not averse to that. Morgan's been the best pitcher, putting a freshman out there. It's a little tough, but, you know, they'll they'll check it out. Uh, the difference here is, you know, whether it's Herman or Morgan, is they're both lefties, although Morgan brings it a little bit harder, right? He can throw in the low 90s. Uh, you know, you got Fluno, the righty, and you got Morgan, the lefty. And in this case, you can flip them, all right? Neither one pitched a whole lot. And again, they pitched on Wednesday and Thursday, so... Everyone's going to be rested and raring to go on a Friday. That's for sure. So Deggs, Matt Deggs can go either way. Uh, I'm Again, I don't know much about Texas. Obviously, the Aggies are as good as baseball team as there is in America. Uh, Texas A&M always seems to come up short when trying to win anything. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, it should be a great atmosphere. And Deggs used to coach at A&M. So there's some familiarity with what they were talking about. And they've got Grambling uh, in there as well. And they've played Texas uh, last year. So uh, they certainly are familiar with their foes. All right. Uh, let's take, uh, well, no, let's wrap it up. All right. Thank you so much for listening. I th unless we get some interviews uh, tomorrow's episode, we'll go back to football for a little bit and uh, do our uh, win totals and see who could surprise, who may be you know, trying to win nine games is not necessarily very easy. And they got some high win totals versus surprising teams, all right? Uh, and maybe some low win totals for some other teams that were a little bit surprising. But we will do that uh, this week, and we'll continue to preview the uh, Sunbelt Conference Tournament uh, at, or the uh, NCAA Tournament uh, as well. All right, thanks so much for hopping on. It is a Lockdown Sunbelt, your team every day. Hope you had a great holiday weekend. Thanks so much for subscribing. We're See if we get to 1250 here soon, but we're still driving for 1500 by August 31st. Everyone have a great day and we'll talk to you again on Wednesday.